Hello my fellow MCs, Primo here. With the 1.5 livestream come and gone, many will be wondering if it's worth spending their stellar jade on the likes of Huahua, Argenti, and Hanya, or saving them for the future. Today, we are going over some factors that may help guide you in your decision making process when deciding who to spend your stellar jade on. So let's sit back, grind some stellar jade, and let's talk about it. Another anomaly in this shining universe. Huahua is a Wind Abundance character and is the second limited 5 star healer to be released in Honkai Star Rail. Now for those who skip Locha and have all the regrets, you need to listen here. Huahua is amazing and is an absolute must pull for an account that needs a solo sustain unit. Her pull value is near the top when it comes to sustain units which generally already have immense value in turn based games. Now you could say that her healing is what makes her an absolutely amazing unit in which you would be correct. But you also can't forget about the cleansing aspect of her kit and the energy regeneration and attack buffs she provides to her allies, which in my opinion really pushes her over the top. However, there is a case to be made for people to not pull for her because you already own said characters on your account. Units like Locha, Fushan, Bailu, and Japard could be considered as fill-ins for Huahua and can already fill the role she provides. Now myself personally, my recommendation would be to pull if you only have one of the four characters I just mentioned as she outclasses any of the 4 star healers that have been released by a mile. From my perspective, I already have Locha, Fushan, and Japard, so I don't necessarily have a need to pull for her. However, and this is a big however, her kit provides so much extra value with her support capabilities, I wouldn't fault anybody who feels the need to pull for her regardless of the current sustain units on their account. She just seems that good. Argenti is in an interesting spot here. Following the path of erudition and possessing the physical element, many will see him as the first of his kind when it comes to element and path and automatically place higher value in that respect. I think the thing that gives me some hesitation when it comes to pulling for Argenti is the randomness of the erudition element and the fact that we have so many meta units when it comes to AoE damage dealers. I just don't see him passing the likes of Blade, Jing Liu, Dan Hung Il, and even Clara with the new follow up attack relic set coming out. Now if you were to compare him to the other erudition character in Jingyu Wan, I think you can make the argument that he is a better pull than him simply because he doesn't have all of his damage output rely on the Lightning Lord follow up attack. With reruns coming out for characters released in versions 1.1 to 1.4, I would say if you are patient enough, just hold off on spending your jade on him unless you aren't somebody that is swayed by the meta. Hanya, on the surface, seems like a high value pull for any account, new or old. Possessing the physical element and aligning with the harmony path, she has some amazing support capabilities that can be utilized by many DPS units in the game. The thing that gives her some enhanced value is the skill point recovery she gets with her skill. On top of this, she does have some speed and attack enhancing capabilities that can help boost the DPS of a single character. I would say she has some pretty good pull value as getting another support for your account will always be an upgrade. In terms of other characters that you may have that can be used in Hanya's role, the first three that come to mind are Asta, Tingyun, and Yu Kong. All of them help increase attack in some way while also possessing the ability to enhance speed, energy regeneration, and crit rate and damage respectively. In my personal opinion, even if you were to have all three on your account, I would say Hanya could still be considered a good value pull. Another anomaly in this shining universe. Huahua's kit is a combination of Locha with her passive healing capabilities, Bai Lu with her AoE instant healing, and Ting Yun with her attack buffs and energy regeneration. Her kit reminds me of Fu Shan's in terms of sustainability, but also support to give teams not only survivability, but also a DPS boost. There is no other way around this, but her ultimate is absolutely broken. Think Ting Yun, but on steroids. With Ting Yun, you were regenerating energy for a single target, but for Huahua, she is able to regenerate energy for the entire party, excluding herself, while giving everybody an attack buff for two turns. For units that have high energy ultimates, Huahua is a literal godsend for support purposes. Her skill and talent work hand in hand with her sacrifice life state. Upon using her skill, she gains the sacrifice life status that lasts for two turns. Essentially, it provides the next ally that takes a turn or uses their ultimate to be healed while every member of the party who is below 50% can be healed once as well. This gives every ally an emergency heal once they reach 50% or less HP while also giving an ally the opportunity to be healed immediately through the use of their ultimate. Overall, her kit is one of the best I have seen in a long time, and I can see why she is such a sought out character. Argenti's kit is pretty standard in terms of how erudition characters deal damage, but the thing that sets him apart is his ultimate, which has two layers of damage to it. One layer, which costs 90 energy, can be utilized, but his ideal attack would be the enhanced ultimate attack, which as of now costs a whopping 180 energy. This ultimate not only deals initial physical damage to all enemies, but will also land six more attacks to random enemies based on a percentage of Argenti's attack stat. His kit is the ultimate nuke, reminding me a lot of Eula and Genshin Impact with her huge physical strikes leading to that final huge hit. 
To offset this huge ult cost, his talent also brings some energy regeneration by allowing him to gain energy every time he uses his basic attack, skill, or ultimate. On top of that, he's able to gain stacks of crit rate up to 10 times, which can be very beneficial when building out his kit for damage potential. With the right setup, it seems like his kit can be devastating, but needs to have units that can support his energy regeneration needs, with Hua Hua and Ting Yun immediately coming to mind. Hanya and her kit remind me a lot of Asta with their speed and attack buffs, but with the added bonus of a damage increase to a targeted enemy. Using her skill to apply burden on an enemy, her talent allows that enemy to receive more damage when another ally uses their basic attack, skill, or ultimate on them for a maximum of 2 turns. Another aspect of her skill which was touched on earlier is that it will regenerate a skill point after two allies have used an attack on the afflicted enemy. The burden state will stay on the enemy until the skill point recovery has happened twice and then will need to be reapplied by Hanya. This allows a team including Hanya to recover two skill points every four allies actions which can be very useful for teams involving skill point negative DPS units like Jingyuan or Donghong IL or supports like Bronya. Another anomaly in this shining universe. None of the new characters being released have been shown in any of the main Trailblaze missions, leading them to all be on equal footing in regards to lore importance. In terms of who has the potential to be a big part of future lore drops, I would say that it could be Argenti, only because we are getting close to ending the Zhangshou Lao Fu chapter and proceeding onto the next world. Of course, this is just purely speculation, but I think his initial backstory has the most appeal and could offer players some interesting tidbits regarding the past events in Honkai Star Rail. His backstory is as follows. A classic knight of the Knights of Beauty, who is piously seeking his missing eye on Adrilla the Beauty. Forthright and candid, he wanders the cosmos, espousing the virtues of Adrilla's good name. The other two characters, Hua Hua and Hanya, both have to do with the Ten Lords Commission, with Hua Hua being a trainee, while Hanya is one of the judges. What's a little funny about this is that Hanya is an actual judge, but is a 4 star while Hua Hua gets the 5 star treatment while being a trainee. I can see that Hoyoverse isn't giving Hua Hua the Noel treatment in Genshin Impact since Noel is still a trainee for the Knights of Favonius. It would be nice to hopefully get some background behind the Ten Lords Commission, either through the limited event that is to be released in version 1.5, or maybe through companion missions for the respective characters. Another anomaly in this shining universe. I know aesthetics are more of a personal preference, so take this all with a grain of salt as these are just my general observations and first reactions when seeing these characters. Hua Hua has got the Hu Tao vibes going on with her and the various spirits that are hanging about in her splash art. It's perfect timing for her release considering Halloween just ended here in the United States and she definitely fits the bill with her spooky vibe. I know many will be happy to be getting a character of smaller stature to add to their accounts and overall she is pretty cute in terms of her aesthetic. I really like the jade green in her clothing and hair as it fits the Zhang Xiao color palette, but to be completely honest, her look is just pretty mid to me. I don't know what it is, but nothing really stands out. Not to say that I don't like her, I think she's fine design wise, I just personally don't jump out of my chair when I see her and go wow, now that is a character I'm excited about. But I think her appeal isn't intended for an audience like myself who is looking for the strong, noble, boss-like husbandos. Although I do have to say I love the little bunny paper spirits flying around her with the Anya Forger smug face from Spy X Family. It's honestly pretty hilarious and as a fan of the series myself, that gets a couple points in my book. Argenti's design has to be suave since he is a follower of the Aeon of Beauty and he is from the faction Knights of Beauty. Now does his design scream husbando status? Absolutely. Am I a little disappointed it looks like a male Hameko? Yes. Could it be Luca in disguise with long hair? Potentially. I mean they do have the same element after all. But in all seriousness I think his design stays very true to his background and is one of the most unique aesthetics that has been released so far. Especially with the sci-fi theming eminent throughout Honkai Star Rail, it's refreshing to get this medieval look. Now for myself, I give an A plus in terms of clothing with the theming and design top notch. My only quote unquote negative is the design of Argenti himself, but I can understand why they did what they did considering roses is a big part of his appeal and having the flowing red hair suits that to a T. Hanya's design falls a little short of my expectations to be honest. The last couple 4 stars to be released have been nothing short of amazing, with Luca, Lynx, and Gwenethan being some of my personal favorites. All three of those characters had unique aesthetics that tied into the region they were from and helped provide better insight into their backstory with just design alone. Hanya's design just doesn't pop, you know? But maybe that's on purpose, which in that case I applaud the devs for sticking true to her character. 
My first thought when seeing her was, she looks so dreary and lifeless, and honestly, that may be for a good reason. Her job description as a judge of the Ten Lords Commission reads, as she spends her days using dreams to predict karmic offenses and has to endure the torrential flood of information regarding the Mara Strux actions, she has long become dual to all things in the world. So although she doesn't necessarily stick out in terms of her design uniqueness and color palette, she makes up for it with her relevance to her character background. Another anomaly in this shining universe. I won't dive too deep into the meta impact that I predict Hua Hua to have, only reason being that I think you understand the vibe I gave when going over her kit earlier in the video. She easily slots into the SS tier for me and I think can be argued to be the best sustain unit in the game with all of the different aspects of her kit. She takes the best out of every sustain unit in the game. Locha's passive healing, Bailu's AoE healing, Fushan's versatility, and Ting Yun's support capabilities, but multiply that by 10. My prediction for Argenti when it comes to meta placement has me slotting him into the high B, low A tier with the potential to move up depending on the supports and light cones used. Argenti is already at a disadvantage when it comes to the path he runs solely because other units can perform his job better in the AoE sense while his portfolio of light cones is very mid unless you have his signature. I think he needs certain supports to really enhance his kit and have him reach his full potential, with Hua Hua and Ting Yun being a must for him. With such a high energy cost, he feels like we are still waiting on a support that can truly unlock his potential. For all the Argenti stands, I apologize for the low ranking, but I can't see him breaking into the meta unless we get a new relic set or support in the future tailor-made for his needs. Hanya slots into the low S tier for me in terms of general teams, while pairing her with a skill point hungry DPS unit like Jing Yuan and Dan Hong Ayel have me slot her into the high S tier in terms of usefulness. I see her as a blend of Ting Yun and Asta, but with the added bonus of being skill point positive, getting a 2 for 1 skill point payoff. I personally will be wanting to pull for her since Harmony support characters are few and far between. In terms of meta, it's also helpful to be able to pull for her since she can also free your Ting Yun to run on one Memory of Chaos team while she can be run on the other, depending on the weakness of the enemies you're reversing. Seeing as she works as a support for all allies on your team, with the damage bonus being applied against the enemy instead of being applied to an ally, which is also a huge plus that only Nihility units have the pleasure of utilizing. I think you can make the argument that she is at the same level as somebody like Pila, who has slowly climbed the ranks as the best 4 star support in the game. Another anomaly in this shining universe. And with that, this will end our video on who you should pull for between Hua Hua, Argenti, and Hanya. If you like the content, please like and subscribe. Comment down below if you are planning on pulling for any of the characters we just talked about, or will you be using them on the Silver Wolf rerun banner? My Silver Wolf updated guide slash pull value video will be coming out as we get closer to her rerun date. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.